Spam calls. I'm Everyone's getting, favorite. I know. I, uh, I I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of them on my cell phone now, like constantly. Uh, either the uh, the Canadian government um, wants some money mm-hmm. from me, uh, or I've won a cruise. I've won many cruises. <laughs> How were they? They were fantastic. Well, the uh, the CRTC is cracking down on spam callers, uh, and they're going to make the Canadian telecoms uh, enforce that by, uh, I believe, September 2020. I wish they had done it sooner. Why is it taking so long? I, I don't know. Uh, on the line, we've uh, got our good friend, Shruti Shikar, Shikar from uh, MobileSyrup.com. Thanks for joining us, Shruti. Thanks for having me, Mike. How are you? Good. So why has it taken so long? So I just actually wanted to clarify one thing. It's um, one part of the implementation is going to happen in 2020, September 2020, as you mentioned. That is one framework that's being implemented. But actually, the real crackdown uh, starts today, uh, December 19th. Um, Basically, there's going to be a new framework, a new call blocking system that's coming into effect today. Um, and that essentially will be for the telecom carriers. Um, they will now uh, block any number that exceeds 15 digits or does not conform to a number that can be dialed. Now, that's if you're making a phone call, um, like from a landline or from a cell phone, and the line, the number gets manipulated. Um, the thing that you were talking about, September 2020, is the second part of the implementation to uh, a, to basically combat spam calls, and that's called the stir shaken framework, uh, and that will actually combat voice over internet protocol phone calls. So calls that are made through WhatsApp or any internet site that generates a number and is able to make phone calls over the internet. So it sounds confusing, but... Um, the crackdown is starting today. <laughs> so well, that's a good thing. No, thanks for clarify, clarifying that. And I think that's a, an important distinction. So like you're saying, December here, uh, regular phone lines like landlines and cell phone uh, callers mm. uh, will be blocked. But to your point, by September of 2020, hopefully, uh, they'll be able to yeah. crack down on these uh, these internet calls. And those, those are the tricky ones because uh, yeah. it's super easy to get software uh, and I've seen it. I've seen people use this where you can download it and then call someone and you can make up any phone number that you're calling from. Uh, absolutely. And, and the, the really annoying part is that not only is uh, can you make up a phone number, the number looks real. It's, it's like a real normal cell phone number with a regular area code and it looks like someone's calling from a landline, but it's, it's not. It's a, it's a spam call. So uh, part of that framework essentially is that the CRTC is going to work with telecom carriers um, and kind of figure out a way to verify whether or not a voice over internet protocol phone call is legitimate or not. Because there are some people who use WhatsApp to call a landline or a cell phone. Um, now that, so that implementation will essentially, we, we don't know what it looks like entirely right now because it's so brand new, but um, it would essentially have like a blue check mark when it's like a legitimate call or a red box that has an X when it's a, a scam or like a, something that could be uh, nefarious or something that's not a, a real person or a scam call. So what that looks like, we don't entirely know. Um, I also, am, from my understanding, the CRTC is actually going to be working with the Federal Communications Commission in the U.S., the FCC, who has already implemented the stir shaken frame, framework um, and will kind of basically be watching how the U.S. is implementing this uh, this new technology. So, yeah, it seems a little complicated, but I, I, I think there's a crackdown that's, that's taking place for sure. One thing I was wondering, and, and I think you kind of touched on it, is is the le- legitimate uses of VoIP tech and and even these these apps. I there's a lot of people that we deal with, like PR firms and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. they use those systems because it's just easier for them to do that and yeah. have and maintain a contact list in in a system like WhatsApp, for example. Um, mm-hmm. And those particular calls should still get through, but there's a chance that some of them might sort of get caught in the net, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that's the problem. Um, and I think that's what the CRTC is going to be figuring out. Like, how do they legitimize a, a VOIP call versus that, that that's being used for, for legitimate purposes versus 
someone calling to say, hey, you owe the government $5 million paid up now or, you know, you're screwed <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> like, I think I think that's what the CRTC is uh, trying to figure out with that particular framework. Well, it, it is a problem. You know, you look at some of the numbers here uh, that I, I have in front of me. Uh, and, you know, on average, uh, you know, Canadians get uh, around 12 spam calls a month. And since 2014, uh, from what I understand, uh, you know, Canadians have been uh, victims of uh, spam phone calls and uh, phone fraud uh, over $16 million. So, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I'm going to actually one up that. So, uh, the CRTC even mentioned that. In a year alone, the CRTC received eighty-five to 90,000 complaints, and a large percentage of that refers to an element of spoofing or spam, spam calls, which is it, – that's insane. That's, that's a lot of spam, good complaints. Can I tell you why that's a lot? Because – how do you get a hold of the CRTC? You, you must be pretty <laughs> pissed off to find the CRT's contact information. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. And, you know, to, to also give the CRTC um, some credit to, you know, when asked, like, well, can you tell us the percentage? They themselves aren't even able to monitor because there's just such a high volume of phone calls um, being made. Uh, with respect to these complaints and to try and see through all of that is just impossible. So it's, it's definitely something that um, people are trying, like the, the regulator, the government, I think, I think it's a very well known issue that's happening. And just in the past six months has just escalated to such a high uh, level. Like you've got Canadians that are being scammed in the thousands of dollars. It's not just, a, it's not like $500. It's like, it's in the thousands. It's, it's, pretty unfortunate. Do you think, Shruti, though, that this is going to make those bad actors uh, dig a little deeper and get a little bit more clever to find ways around these systems? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, like, we're, it's like, it's like trying to implement technology when you know the technology is going to improve. And in the next five years, we're going to have to look at this yet again. But what, what this entire process is doing is, is to create that precaution, to create that uh, you know, we're looking at it. We're we're trying to implement, an, uh, you know, a standard here. Um, there's always going to be bad actors, and and so as such, as much as the regulator has a duty to implement technology or a framework to help Canadians, I think it's also part of a Canadian's responsibility to research and understand, you know, what a spam phone call is. Why are they receiving it? How can they um, protect themselves? Right. And there are many steps that can be taken. Um, there are apps third-party applications that help you block spam phone calls. If you do receive a phone call, you know, don't be afraid. Um, I think that's the biggest concern that Canadians have. You know, they think that they should, that if they get a call from the government, that's an automated phone call, they should be giving that, their information out. And, and that would never be the case, you know, um, unless it's like a legitimate reason. Like I got a phone call from the CRA literally yesterday because I had authorized my new accountant access to my uh, my personal details. And so she was calling me to confirm that that actually happened. But she wasn't calling to say, hey, you know, can we're, give us your money kind of thing, right? Like, that's not something the government would do. And the government has also mentioned that. So I think it's a two way thing. It's not just the regulator helping, but I think it's also Canadians educating themselves. It still feels like whack-a-mole a little bit, though. <laughs> it does. And it's, 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 it's hard. It's complicated. I think it's like, you know, there's a there's a huge chunk of Canadians who are getting spoofed who are elderly and they yeah. don't understand, you know, how to deal with these things. And, you know, my mom's not old, like she's in her 60s and she still gets scared. Like she doesn't, I've had to sit her down and say, mom, like you're not going to get deported. Like you didn't do anything, <laughs> you didn't do anything illegal. And, you know, there's there's that legitimate fear that Canadians have. And I think it's part of that education process. It's it's important for journalists to make people aware that they're not going to be scammed and how to protect themselves. We're talking with Shruti Shikar from MobileSyrup.com, a great website for all your mobile news uh, and needs. John, it looks like your uh, cruise ship uh, giveaway days are coming to a close here <laughs> pr pretty soon. Yes, unfortunately. Shruti, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.